How you doing, Jared? I'm great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Before we even get started, let's tell the listeners that you are coming to Charlotte on October 12th. I'm coming. I can't wait. It's been a couple of years since I've been in Charlotte. I'm pumped. Well, being in that comedy zone, everybody's ever ta- they've always talked about how intimate it is because it's a very low ceiling in there. Yeah, it's in that basement, right? <laughs> I, I, I was there years ago, and then I did a show during the pandemic. I did one outside in the parking lot <laughs> of wherever you guys have your, like, uh, like there's a bunch of different venues, yeah. and then the park out of those venues and I have to say it was the most professional show I've ever done because it was all the people that work on like Bon Jovi's show and then they were like we need work to do and I was like I'll come down to Charlotte let's do a show and it was the most amazing production they were like you know when when I was going on usually when I go on stage they go yeah go out there and I have to like go you know get around a dumpster or something this one they're like and three two one and then they added me Mike, lights on, action. I was like, this, I nothing like the people of Charlotte. I really do like it there. Great people. It's good old Bank of America town, USA. I love coming down there. Absolutely. So in any way, did it prepare you for this special on Netflix? Because when you're talking about three, two, one, I mean, you're, right. you're on when, when that, when that happens. Yeah. You know what? It's, uh, you know, the pandemic and doing material during the pandemic prepared me for, you know, the the special because what I loved about, you know, doing comedy during such a hard time for everyone was to see like, hey, we just want to laugh at the weird stuff in life. We just want to laugh at like the relatable things. We want to see that we're connected. And, you know, the special on Netflix is called 37 and Single. And if you've been single in the modern era, if you've used a dating app, if you've had friends try to give you advice, (laughs) if you've gone through a breakup, if you've gone to a gender reveal party, if you've been trying to lose 10 pounds your whole life like I have, you're going to find relatability in it. And you're going to be able to watch it with your significant other and have a nice night on the couch and enjoy yourself and understand that there's people out there just like you. Yeah. I'm so glad you, you, you brought it up that way because in my notes here I have, this is more than just a show for single people. It's for everybody and you're going to laugh very hard. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to hear. Yeah, because it's like, again, I'm a millennial. I am uh, and proudly and I have my and I deal with my parents every day. I got to call <laughs> home and I'm on the and I'm on the family plan still at 38 now. Like I'm, you know, it, so all the things I'm going through, whether they're dating or not dating or family stuff. Yeah, what I found is, is, is and I didn't mean for this is just that everyone seems to have the same feeling on it you know the this idea because i'm the google generation you know we look up the restaurant before we go that in itself for me to say that is so the same as everyone i know we don't leave the house unless it's for a good comfy reason we don't get into oh maybe it'll be good no 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 we sit there as millennials we go Who's going to be at the party? <laughs> Tell me what I can expect. Exactly. Exactly. I was I was just with one of the creators of dictionary.com the other day and I said it's because of you that I'm a bad speller and he goes, "Why?" Because every word now I have to look it up. I have to see if dictionary.com has spelled it right. <laughs> Right. We are, you know, we love efficiency. We want to make sure everything's right. You know, when you walk somewhere, what do you do? You Google map the that's walk. It, that's Even it. If you've done it a thousand times. You just got to be sure. We love efficiency. We love the Uber showing up as we're in stride to get into the car. We don't want to walk outside and hail a cab or <laughs> maybe the, maybe someone will show up. No, no, no. I need to know the Uber is here at 12.01 and I will get there at 12. Well, <laughs> you know how I found the Google map? We were in New York City down there at Ground Zero, and we thought, oh, we'll just walk back to the meat district to our hotel. Oh, we were going no. in the wrong direction. So one of our friends says, get on your damn Google map and find it. Right, right, right. And then from then on, you never stop using it. That's exactly. That's the thing. Yep, 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 yeah. That, and it, uh, Google Calendar, the whole works. My whole life is based on that Google Calendar. Right. It's, uh, you know, it, it, I always say this, like if the iPhone... Just stop. If 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 Apple decided 
the day start was a minute change the clock by a minute all of us would just you know <laughs> if they just change the time by a minute every every day by the end of the year day would be night night would be day and we just go by it yeah. <laughs> i do want to tell you something though because you, you're talking about 37 and single on netflix i'm 61 i've never been single i always tell people that i went from my mother to my first wife to my second wife but i do <laughs> fear that single life though because it could happen I hang out with my friends in the married world and they're having kids and I have to relate to both. And you can see it from your married friends that relate, you know, as they get into their kids and get into their marriages, you know, they, they go, they, they have this curiosity, but it is with fear. They'll go, they'll go, Oh, what's the dating app? Like, let me play with it. They'll want to play with your dating app. And you go, <laughs> you're, you're playing with lives. What are you? God, who are you? A puppeteer? I don't know. I, you know, these are humans out here trying to find love and you're just swiping left and right on my, on my, you know, on my app just to have fun. It's like, this isn't fun. This is my life. So you don't have to deal with being a codependent then? A codependent. Meaning you have to have people around you at all times. Oh, no. I, I listen, if, again, to, to bring it back to the phone, my phone is my girlfriend right now. I, 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 I'm okay. I go to a bar. I take her out. I treat her to all, you know, the charges she wants. Um, when I go to a bar, it's, that's the other hard part is like we're so attached to these, you know, modern technologies that can kind of take your brain off of feeling lonely. So you get distracted. So, you know, I can go to a bar and hang on my phone and feel like I'm out with someone. And, and that's a little sad to admit. <laughs> So when when you're turning your life into the comedy act, do you feel like Taylor Swift putting her lyrics into a song? I've always said I'm the Taylor Swift of comedy. I've always said that to people. I've always, you know, I my tour, it's the Eras tour minus a couple billion dollars. I <laughs> I, um, no, you know what? Everything I talk about on stage is true. And then you make it funny. Yeah. So you start with truth, then make it funny. So sometimes the truth is hard to, to admit. Sometimes that includes being vulnerable. Sometimes that includes talking about breakups and what your feelings were at the time. And you're kind of jumping off a cliff a little bit, hoping someone, you know, is there to like catch you because you hope that some of these things relate to someone in the room and they get a laugh out of it. You know, the worst reaction in the world to a joke is, Oh, so like <laughs> maybe me and Taylor differ there. She can get an awe and feel good about it. I get an awe and I'm like, Oh no, I'm not sad. I'm okay. I swear. How do you deal with those situations where when you do a special like like Jared Freed, 37 and single on Netflix, you do it. And then when you go out to someplace like the Comedy Zone and people are shouting from the dance floor, basically, to go into a joke. I mean, you get I mean, they're a heckler, but at the same time, they're going, oh, my God, they came here because I saw that. Right. I, I you know, sometimes I do a bit on the special about the ick and the ick. Um, what I've been doing, the ick is women go on a day with a guy. He does one thing and they never want to be with him yes. ever. Yes. And, and, and it's a very relatable thing. And for me as a guy, as a straight guy, I uh, I have no relatability to that whatsoever. So I was I went on the road and I started asking people, tell me your icks. And <laughs> women would stand up and they'd have a story and they were all great and fantastic. And if you want to watch the bit, it's on the special. But I put out a lot of these clips of asking for people in the crowd. Tell me your icks and women standing up and telling them to me and. You know, for me, I, I if someone wants to yell out at me, that's so you know that's okay. It's not what I want. I didn't. I think the problem is people think, well, they're helping. No, no, no. You are an obstacle yep. that I will try and <laughs> turn into funny. And if it's funny, I've done my job in spite of you. <laughs> you know, you you've made the night harder, not easier. And and again. The, the problem is that those are sometimes the most magical moments from a live show is someone yelling out in an interaction that n it will never be repeated again. That So in a way, they are right. You have helped, you know, the general, you know, fun of the show, but not by design. And, and the people that try to keep helping are the ones that, you know, the rest of the room is like, OK, shut up already. Enough. <laughs> That's the reason why at the Comedy Zone, I sit on the far, far, far end of everything in the back, because I like watching <laughs> the full show. And then I'll sit there and figure out, try to figure out who the heckler is going to be and find out how you're going to handle that situation. Uh, it, is, it is, again, handle. Like, you have to, like, it is work, you know? So yeah. 
I had a situation the other night. She just kept yelling out about Halo Top ice cream. <laughs> and because I, I mentioned Halo Top and how much I love it. And Halo Top is the pint of ice cream that has the calories on the front. It tells you how many calories are in the whole pint because you can eat the whole thing. And then I just hear this loud conversation by right. And I go, what's going on over here? Like, I, like, I can't not address this. And the woman looked at me and she goes, I was just telling them how much I love the birth birthday cake flavor of Halo Top. And I go, do you see how not funny that explanation was? <laughs> That's like people who think they can be radio jocks. You know, it's like, no, no, sit down. You know, no, that we, right. we're trained to do this. No, right. The whole job is me to is me explaining what Halo Top is while making it funny. You don't have to turn to the person next to you and go, oh, well, Halo Top is this ice cream. And I'm like, I'm doing that right now. You're in the way. <laughs> but then she thought it was like this fun joke. So like uh, literally an hour later in the set, I like she I, I said something and she goes, what about Halo Top? And it was funny because the whole room of, of the whole audience literally exhaled. Yeah, okay. They literally all went ah. like it, it was like and I said to her, I go, the country is divided on literally everything. Yeah. Yeah. The country right now, there isn't one thing we agree on, except that this whole room of people, no matter what their background, thought this is annoying. But you know what's great about what you do, Jared, is the fact that um, you, you you cover a subject and nobody has come up to you saying, man, it's about time you go woke because you're being evil to to uh, to single people. And I'm going, he's not being evil to single people. He's speaking the real deal. I'm speaking for single people. I'm yeah. letting people know the frustrations when your friends try to set you up, how annoying they can be, <laughs> how much you appreciate. That's the thing. That's the thing. Real life is context and nuance. So I, that's what stand up comedy is for. Some people go extreme and to me, they're liars. No one is that extreme. We are all context and nuance. We are all somewhere in the gray, somewhere in the middle. Yes, I want to be set up by my friends. All single people want to be set up by their friends, family and coworkers. <laughs> Also, all people who set you up never do the job fully. Both can be true. We want to be set up and you suck at setting us up. Every married person will go, do you want to meet a human? How about a human? And you're like, well, do you have a picture of said human? And they're like, oh, who are you? Who are you to want a picture? It's like, I don't think I'm anybody. I just have, I just have, maybe I, I like a brunette. What are you, can you just let me know who I'm dealing with? Wow. I was reading an article this morning before stepping in the studio that uh, the majority of men love to hug their pillows. They like to have body pillows. You being a single person, you got one of those body pillows going on? I didn't know that because I am a body pillow guy. I love a body pillow. I, you know, I actually have a pillow um, uh, a strategy. Wow. I, I get two longer pillows. I like two firm, longer pillows, and I put them at a V, and then I put my head in between the crease of the two pillows. Yep. That is a pro tip for anybody out there looking for a new sleeping method. Right here, you can hear it. You, you heard it here first. Take it, It's the V method. I love I slept that way last night put me rock me off to dreamland how do you deal with other single people's habits because it seems like or maybe because I've been married my entire life I feel like that you're set in your ways that's the hardest part about being 37 and single that's the difficulty is you here's the thing there and again you're coming from Charlotte there's there's a, there's a brand of person in Charlotte who's been married since you know the womb who <laughs> thinks that every that thinks that every single person is a sad person who's failed that's not the truth single people in their 30s are doing great they're making money they're having a great time they want someone who fits into their life mm -hmm. that's the hard part you're not looking to grow with someone i'm looking to meet someone who fits in right away and that's what makes you a little bit more judgmental because you go you know as they say in the stock game past performance doesn't indicate future results but that's all you got to go with so you've been on the date with the person that you know is from a certain section of town or had the certain name or you know you know is a certain way and you go and you become more judgmental and you go you leave the house left less and that's the hard part See, I've always thought going to a comedy show should be a tax write-off because in reality I believe that 98.9% .9 of you is a psychologist 
<laughs> right. We well, we sit there. You know, I have the time to think of these things. Ever, I'm not a genius. I'm just sitting here thinking, why do I act this way? And 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 again, putting context to it, going, you know what? I am judgy on a dating app. I am, but the people that I'm judging are all nice people. They're all smiling faces looking for the same thing as me. So both can be true at the same time. I can be a judgy jerk, and they can be nice people that deserve someone. It's just not going to be me. So now as a comedian, do you do what radio people do? One thing that we did was we had a certain room where the jocks would meet and we would tell people, if you come into this room, you will be offended because it's who we are. Do you do things? Do, I mean, do you have those kinds of rules as well? No, you know, I, the, the offended thing doesn't really play to me. I, 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 to me, I'm the I am the person I am on stage and off stage. I I'm the person I am with you right now on this uh, on the on the radio now. Like I don't know, it's uh, uh, the idea. Like from if someone was to be offended in the crowd, I'd be as I'd be as weirded out as I'd be with a friend who was offended by me. Wait, what happened? What are you talking about? I only. I'm only being honest and speaking from my point of view and for myself uh, and, and, and also not to hurt anybody. That's not my goal. I swear to God, you saw my notes before we even got this conversation started because I have what are you like before you even get on that microphone? And then here you are talking about it, that you're the same person. Yeah, I mean, it's an every performance is a is an amped up version of yourself. Yeah. But at the same time, like every story I tell on stage, everything I talk about is something that's happened, and then I make it funny. Um, you got to find a way towards funny, and and sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes it's just you telling a story, and everyone goes, "Okay, well, where's the funny?" And then you know that takes time to work out. Yeah, because isn't that isn't funny relating? I mean, you you've got to be able to relate with it I, before you can laugh with it. Absolutely. Like I, I've been talking a lot lately about my family on stage. And if you get to the end of the special, you can see, I put hidden cameras in the green room. I put <laughs> hidden. So I, I taped the special December, 2022. Um, my, I, I paid for it myself. I made the whole special. I did it with Betches, which is the, uh, the media company, they were the co-producers. And then we went to the market and tried to sell it. And we found a home on Netflix, which is like the most unbelievable thing in the world. But when I first taped it, I want my parents came to the show and I was like, I want to do something with my parents. I want to make, you know, show how funny they are. So I put hidden cameras in the green room. And if you get to the credits <laughs> of the special, you can watch. My parents had no idea they were going to be on Netflix until two days before it came out because I didn't know I was going to be on Netflix until a couple of weeks before. But I had all this footage. And the most cool thing in the world is my parents on this during the credits, they're yelling at me. I'm taking a picture of my mom. She's like, no, that's a horrible picture. My parents are fighting about whether it's Christmas time or not. They're, they're arguing. My dad's talking to the makeup person. My mom's you know, asking all these questions. It's five minutes before I went on stage. My parents are talking about everything I don't want to be talking about right then. And the cool part has been how many people get to the end of the special and they're like, oh my God. And you with your parents was unbelievable. <laughs> and now all of my jokes for the new hour when I come to Charlotte is all about my relationship with my family. And what's the best part is, is I see, you know, you know, people my age with their parents just shaking them, yep. hitting them. Yep. Going, He's talking about you. This is what we're we do the same thing. And it's such a cool thing. It makes me feel really good. And you don't see a show on Netflix about you and your parents or even you as a single person. I mean, everything that you've talked about in the past 20 minutes has all been I, all I, I'm doing is sitting here thinking this is either going to be a brilliant pro podcast or you're going to create your own Netflix show. I, I, from from your mouth to Ms. Netflix's ears, whoever's <laughs> at Netflix, you know, listen to Arrow. I, I, you know, I would love to make a show about it. I, I, I think 37 and single is a show. I think like the relationship between millennials and boomers is the weirdest relationship that has been seen. We are weirdly financially tied. Uh, you know, I'm 38 and I'm on the family plan. What other generation? <laughs> What other generation had something they used every five seconds that their parents paid for and then thought it was OK? You know, there's people out there that don't think it's OK. But, you know, half the audience right now is like, yeah, well, it's cheaper. That, that's the excuse. It's cheaper. And you're like, yeah, so is living in their basement. You're not doing that. <laughs> Jared, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, dude. 
Thank you so much. I would love to. And I can't wait to be in Charlotte. I, it's a whole different hour than the special. So if you go watch the special 37 and single, it's on Netflix. And then you can come to the show. It's a completely different hour that if you like 37 and single, you'll love the next hour that's live in Charlotte. I love it, man. You be brilliant today. Okay, sir. Thank you.